The Navy's contribution to the warning service includes the Fleet Weather Central, located about 15 miles from the Miami Weather Bureau office and Airborne Early Warning Squadron 4, located at the Naval Air Station in Jacksonville. This is the famed Navy Hurricane Hunter Squadron, assigned to reconnaissance and tracking down of storms during the hurricane season, and ready to go at any time. The squadron consists of P-2V Neptune and Constellation-type aircraft manned and maintained by 245 officers and enlisted men. At the Fleet Weather Central, a 24-hour watch is kept on all suspicious weather areas. A direct line is maintained with the Weather Bureau office to coordinate weather information. Here, all reports are collected and analyzed, low-pressure areas charted. It looks like trouble has developed in this area north of Puerto Rico. Could be a bad one. A reconnaissance flight will have to be made. Flight orders are relayed by way of a second teletypewriter line to the Hurricane Squadron at Jacksonville. Here the squadron commander gets first news of the impending storm. But the sound of the teletype bell carries elsewhere too. To us, that panic bell means just one thing, trouble. It isn't long before the plane captain gets the word officially and starts rounding this up for briefing. Up in the skipper's office, the plane commander, the operations officer, and the flight aerologist show up in a hurry. There are questions to be answered. How much fuel will be needed? Where will the flight terminate? Is it going to be high or low level? These things have to be decided, and fast. Of course, if you keep up on the weather reports, like most of us in the squadron do, then you have a pretty good idea of where you're going before the operations officer tells you. He also tells us that it will be low-level type flight and that the plane is scheduled for takeoff in 45 minutes. The aerologist briefs us on the general development of the storm. Since reports from the storm area indicate winds already exceed 75 miles per hour, it's now officially a hurricane. And it has a name, Thelma. Meanwhile, out on the flight line, the fuel load is being topped off and the big P2V is just about ready for takeoff. The briefing ends with a few final words from the plane commander. He outlines any deviation from the normal routine that we'll make gives us any specific instructions, and then, good luck. And if that storm is anything like it looks on paper, we'll need it. Now with the briefing over, we each have our own job to do in getting our gear together. The success of our flight can depend on having the right gear when it's needed, so nobody misses a thing. Only 10 minutes before takeoff now, the special survival gear has been checked and laid out, Flight plan's been filed, and now everything is ready. When you're hunting hurricanes, there can't be any loose objects in the plane. Everything has to be fastened down, including you. With over 900 miles to go to the storm area, it's going to be a long flight. But for the flight crew, there's not much time to rest. As soon as we get underway, the radio operator has to get off a departure dispatch. Back at Fleet Weather Central, they'll be keeping track of us all the way. The navigator's job begins right away, too. A continuing plot of the plane's course has to be kept. And on a flight like this, the weather can really foul him up if he isn't careful. Even a big plane like this has a hard time staying on course in a hurricane. Down in the nose, the aerologist is getting set in his ringside seat. He has a good view from here, but believe me, he can have it. 
It takes a good team to fly a hurricane, and we have the best crew in the squadron. Well, anyway, we think so.